Leading us off tonight, a massive rally in support of a persecuted priest and pushback against the bishop doing the persecuting. Standing by live now from Lombard, Illinois, is Church Militant's William Mahoney, who has uh, on the ground there, has been on the ground there at the crew the whole time as the crowd starts to filter in there, Will, and I see him behind you right now. How are you guys doing? What's the atmosphere like there? Uh, this is super duper high energy. As you can see, there's a ton of people starting to gather in. They've sold out. They had a thousand tickets. The uh, It's actually going to be over there to, to this side of me. It's just they're, they're so excited to uh, hear all the talks. Father Altman's going to be here. Uh, Liz Yor's going to be talking, and they're just so pumped. It's the Coalition of Canceled Priests, and some people here, they've got a lot of stories, a lot of canceled priests in different dioceses. We're focusing on Rockford right now uh, with Father James Parker here tonight. Yeah, I think what's interesting about this is that th this sort of thing is, has got to be a, a concern for bad bishops. They start to see the laity coalescing, you know, the, the sort of awaking the great sleeping giant. And I sort of get the sense from all of the stuff that's been going on in lead up to this. That's exactly what this is like. That is exactly what this is. Now, Bishop Malloy, he has kind of a history of getting rid of traditional priests. The estimate is, I think, around 13 right now. So this Father Parker, this was the kind of the last straw because he's just so loved. He's really known for his holiness and his sanctity, and they just... He just really, he really poked the hornet's nest this time, and now it's getting more and more people riled up. It's getting coverage. We're obviously church militants here. There's a, radio, a Catholic radio station back there. So uh, the other thing too is, yeah, Malloy, Malloy oust these people, but the pre, some of the priests he promotes really raise eyebrows and raise questions. So uh, let's contrast a few key players in the Rockford saga. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Back in May, Father Parker received a call from the Chancery informing him he was being removed as pastor of Holy Cross in Batavia on June 15th and instructing him he was not to stay at any rectory in the diocese. The move was in violation of canon law and so Father Parker held his ground, explaining he was still pastor until Bishop Malloy followed the church's law. We can delude ourselves about what Jesus taught changing his lessons to match our own desires. Malloy then turned up the heat, threatening Holy Cross employees with possible loss of employment should they listen to Father Parker instead of the parochial administrator, Father Jared Twenty. He did this through his attorney, Ellen Lynch, whom many clergy and laity in Rockford report operates in a cutthroat manner and who Malloy hides behind. At that point, Father Parker, concerned for the well-being of these employees, left the Holy Cross premises, though he clarified he's still pastor and he's mulling over options with canon and civil lawyers moving forward. Of course, some priests removed from ministry need to be, for legitimate reasons. But it seems the majority of Malloy's oustings involve good priests who are traditional-minded. Meanwhile, he seems to reward priests he likes with promotions, regardless of qualifications or experience. One such priest is the very Reverend Kyle Mano, who serves as Rockford's vocation director, campus ministry director, and vicar Ferrain of the DeKalb Deanery, meaning he oversees the priests in that area. Priests in the diocese explained this is an impressive resume for a young man ordained only five years ago in 2016. Reverend Father Kyle Anthony Mano! Standing at the altar during Mano's first Mass was Monsignor Glenn Nelson, a Vicar General, moderator of the Curia, and head of the Deaf Ministry. It's so important to be together as a family. Sources explain Nelson took Mano under his wing years ago, even bringing him on lavish trips when Mano was still a seminarian. And while Father Parker continues to stream rosaries and holy hours for his flock, I give you my entire self, Lord Jesus, now and forever. The very Reverend Mano continues to post videos of himself beatboxing, cooking, and shopping, that shirt's a dollar. trashing traditional priests like Parker while elevating inexperienced priests like Mano just raised more questions about Malloy's own character and his intentions. 
you know, Father Mano is, you know, it, 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 we're not picking on him. We're just showing you what he himself has put out there. And for him, we're, you know, sources on the ground here tell us he was made vocation director within the first year of his priesthood. He wasn't even a priest a full year. So, I mean, total lack of experience. And it really shows he's being set up as a gatekeeper. It's like you're one of these guys or you're not one of these guys. And Father Parker's clearly not one of these guys, even though he's eminently more qualified to, say, be a vocations director or have any other high position in the diocese so i mean that, that's just what's going on right here and another and another uh, diocese is throughout the nation